<laughs> oh, there we go. It's live. We're live at a cemetery. I know that's an oxymoron, but we are live at the Westwood Memorial Cemetery. How's it going, guys? Look who we're with. You know who Hugh Hefner is? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. hey, hey Marcus, is this going to come out backwards if I'm shooting from the... Yeah, it is. From this you camera? Yeah. From this camera. Yeah, right. uh -huh. What? Uh, look how beautiful she is. Smile and say hi. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be backwards? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's going to be backwards. Oh, okay. Hey, Judy, what's up? What's going on? We're out here at Westman Memorial Cemetery again to visit Natalie Wood's grave. Talk about the case being reopened. How's it going, guys? I told you we'd be here today. And, uh,. Oh, there's somebody else doing a live video here. No, we're the only ones allowed. <laughs> it's backwards, but that says Marilyn Monroe right there. Shout out to immortal Marilyn Monroe goddess, immortal goddess, Lucas's group, and also Marilyn Monroe. Love her. Throwing kisses for you right yeah, today. Yeah, he had that pretty much reserved for me. So years. we're going to go yeah. over to Natalie yeah. Woods' yeah. grave, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the reopening of Natalie Woods' case because we have some uh, new information about this case. So we're going to go over here. We're going to try not to act like we're vlogging because they're being kind of weird about it. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Can you take? I want a picture of you too. Hi. <laughs> Say hi, YouTube. Hi. hi, YouTube. What was your name again? Mishika. Mishika, nice to meet you. Uh, oh. Lovely talking with you. Okay, now we'll go over here. Beautiful lady from India. Okay, so I'm just gonna, they told me I couldn't film in here, so I'm just kind of trying not to look obvious, but we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say hi and talk about Natalie Wood Wagner. Natalie Wood Wagner. So, that's Natalie Wood. Oh, over here is Bob Crane, by the way. Bob Crane, Hogan's Heroes. Hogan's Heroes. And uh, I'm just going to walk back over here so they don't say anything again. I don't want to cause any trouble. It's kind of stupid. They said we can photograph, but we can't videotape. And I'm like, what's the difference, you know? A picture is a picture is a picture. But, uh, yeah, let's get, we'll go real small on the, so anyway, go over here to Dean Martin's maybe. How's it going guys? What the hell? Cotton candy. The fam is in the house, I think. Is that James? So we're out here at Westwood Memorial again to talk about the reopening of the case of Natalie Wood. Did she really drown? We don't really know. But I'm here with Marcus. Say hi, Marcus. There he is again. And we're out here in front of Dean Martin's crypt. And uh, so, guys, there was a press conference on Saturday night just after Marcus and I were here that talked about the case being reopened. And they were talking about how the captain was coming forth and reiterating some of his story about Natalie Wood. Hey, James, what's up? Fam in the house. So uh, James was here. I brought James here. We saw Marilyn's crypt and what have you. And now Hugh, uh, Hugh Hefner is here. But um, so let's talk about some of the incriminating evidence that looks really bad for the people on that boat, Robert Wagner, let's say. 
Now, for all those who don't know, Natalie Wood was a big movie star in the 50s and 60s. She was a childhood star, and she was married to Robert Wagner, this other very big movie star. And um, Robert Wagner and her owned a boat called the Splendor. And one night, they were out on the Splendor with Robert Wagner, Natalie Wood, Christopher Walken, the other famous movie star, her co-star in the movie Brainstorm. We don't really know why Robert, oh, sorry, we don't really know why Christopher Walken was on the boat, Marcus. I mean, what was he doing there? Who knows? It's really strange. I mean, because supposedly, supposedly, um, Robert Wagner didn't know Christopher Walken that well. Yep. And the story is he got jealous over Natalie. He thought he was trying to have an affair with his wife. And there was a big fight. And then Christopher Walken went to his room for the night. And by the way, this yacht is not very big. I don't know the exact footage of it, Marcus, but it couldn't be more than 75 feet. It's probably a 70 foot or something like that. It wasn't huge. It probably had two staterooms and maybe another little area to sleep. But what was Christopher Walken doing on the boat? And why hasn't he talked to the police in any more descriptive fashion? I don't know. But we're going to give all these guys the reasonable of the doubt, you know, until they're, you know, confirmed guilty, of course. This is all just conjecture that I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, I still feel like something's up as well. Um, I feel like there's too many weird things. Like, let's say, okay, so they said, uh, Robert Wagner said she got in the dinghy and started it up and went toward the shore. But she didn't know how to drive the dinghy. And there's no evidence that she ever drove the dinghy before. And she's in her nightgown and, and stockings or socks. And she has a down jacket on of some sort that actually helped her float in the water. It was more buoyant and whatever. But she was found soon after that. Now, the weird part about it is that supposedly the captain, this is all coming from the captain, by the way. Now, recently they started, the, they reopened the case, I believe, is because several people came forward and said that, um, that they heard the argument and they actually saw Robert Wagner um, uh, at the back of the boat arguing with Natalie Wood. So he was, a, as Marcus said, a person of interest because he's the last person that was ever seen with Natalie Wood. He's also the husband, which is always the prime suspect, you guys because uh, this could have been a crime of passion, if let's say. But let's say it wasn't a crime of passion. Let's just say she went overboard and he was like, they were arguing and he said, see you later, I'm not gonna rescue you, her, which is pretty cold-blooded, Marcus. But, and again, we don't know if he did that, but it's, uh, it's just very interesting. So now Monday, Marcus watched a uh, another press conference where these the cops came forward and they're probably not the same cops that worked on this uh, 40 years ago probably not but Marcus said that they've run out of clues or leads any more leads than what that press conference was and we were just debating on the way over here what the heck was that press conference about like why would they do that press conference if they didn't really have new evidence on the guy and I was saying to Marcus well were they trying to like I don't know, uh, scare him into maybe coming forward with new information or they thought he'd spill his guts after all these years because he's 88 years old. I don't know how long he'll live, but uh, oh. I think he'll want to clear his conscience one way or the other. And Christopher Walken, guys, I really think that he's a key figure in this. We want to know what Christopher Walken knew. And... Quite frankly, I have to say, why did you keep your mouth shut for all these years? This was your co-star. This was a lovely lady, and she died on on your on the boat. It's not your boat, but why not come forward and talk about it? He, I don't know. It just stinks, is what it does. It just the whole thing stinks. So yeah, I mean, it, um, they're on the boat, and they're obviously arguing by the end of the boat where there, there's like a ramp at the end of the boat or something uh, where you go down like uh, so you can get uh, to the dinghy uh -huh. they're in that area and they um by the way the dinghy was like an inflatable dinghy i thought it was some kind of hard no no it's a it's like a raft it's, it's a big a, yeah it's, 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 a, it's, it's a, a professional raft, but, but it's it a has a motor on it motor. yeah it does yeah 
and so the the dinghy's not tied and so he comes back and says the dinghy's gone and so uh-huh. I think maybe he could have pushed her into the dinghy and just pushed set her off could be she could have been enraged about something we also mentioned that there this could be the opposite way around maybe she's jealous of him but if he really killed her when you kill someone you're not going to bring suspicion upon yourself you're going to try to you know you're it just seems like he he was very very angry with her and he thought she might have been okay you know like she was on the dinghy or whatever hmm. but I think that was a state of mind, but it was still very, very, um, very cold, cruel thing to do because you're on a boat and she's out there in the ocean somewhere. She's not on the boat. If she's not on the boat, that's a serious situation. Absolutely. In dark water, which she was told that she was going to die. Her mother told her she had a premonition that she was going to die. I don't know why your mom, I don't know why your mom would fill your head with that, that stuff, but, um, Another thing that is very unusual is that the captain said that he invited the captain down into the galley and started plying him with alcohol, like triple scotch on the rocks or whatever. And they just waited there to see what would happen. And of course, she didn't come back and there was no sign. And um, so if you really want to go find your wife in the water, why would you be downstairs drinking Um Also, another thing that the captain said, which was that he heard Robert Wagner say, get off my effing boat. That was a quote from the captain from Robert Wagner. Also, uh, another thing that was strange was he the captain said that he had asked to turn on the, the spotlight, the searchlight, and that Robert Wagner told him not to. And then another thing which I can't really truly confirm, but. Supposedly, there was a four-hour lag in time for the time she went overboard to the time that she, that she, uh, by the time she, uh, that they reported it to the Coast Guard. And I also heard that he had lawyered up. He had called his lawyer before he had called the Coast Guard to look for his wife in the water. I find that very, very troubling, Mr. Wagner. I'd like to hear what you have to say and we want to clear your name we like you we we love you as an actor we love your work we'd love you to clear your name and we'd like you to come forward and tell us what you know about that night and you know we're not saying you should be you should be thrown in jail uh, we're just saying we want to know the truth her family deserves the truth and hashtag justice for Natalie all one word lowercase hashtag justice for Natalie and uh, her sister, Lana Wood, is trying to um, assist the, the cops with whatever she knows. Uh, and Lana Wood said in her press, in her uh, statement through Twitter or what have you, that she's not going to protect and shield anybody any longer and that the truth has to come out. And that was... Uh, Lana Wood that's Natalie Wood's sister and um, so what do you guys think what do you think happened to Natalie Wood do you think it was truly an accident were they just too drunk and she fell over the side do you think I think there's four or five different possibilities and um, the other one would be that um, the other one would be that he had something to do with it the other one would be that he knew she was out there and didn't help her. And uh, the other thing is it's truly an accident. And he didn't hear her go over and the captain comes back out after hearing them arguing and she's gone. And he says, Natalie's gone. I don't know. The whole thing is very, very troubling. And... Um, I don't know what to think. What do you guys think? That's why I'm out here again following up on this story, this latest story on uh, Natalie Wood. We're standing outside Dean Martin's crypt, one of the Rat Pack. So I thought I told you guys I was coming back out here to do a follow up on my video. I got a lot of great comments and uh, only one dislike I think out of all of them and it's the the video is doing very well part one go check that out Um, 
James is in the house. Is James in the house? There he is. Yep. Yeah. You don't know. It's just, this is a mystery. We want to get to the, the bottom of it. Um, yeah, he's not a vegetable, but I don't think he, I don't know. I, I just think new information came out. It was reopened in 2011. So they've had all these years, seven years to work on it. And uh, we just don't know. And that's, uh, that's part of the mystery. And that's, there's only a few people on the whole planet that can tell the police what happened that night. And we just, you know, we just don't know. And like I said, I'm trying to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. Come forward. Tell us more. Be more transparent. He's lawyered up again, I understand. He's not going to talk to these new set of detectives who have been following the story. The new, t new detectives are obviously used to police work and they know when somebody's avoiding the, the issue or yep what's up big tiny Goldilocks Hernandez what is up Let's see uh, yeah EVPs from here um, I've done some electromagnetic frequencies EMFs and I do have that on, a feature on my cell phone but I don't have that on I, I would have to okay so I have another cell phone in this little pouch here but it's not hooked up to the internet so I can't do EMFs live with you guys. I could I could finish up the live stream and then do an EMF afterwards and show you later. Um, I don't have an EVP reader out here today. I'm sure I could download someone uh, one somewhere, but um, anyway, shout out to James out there. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Thoughts go out to you. All right, uh, and. Um, so anyway, we thought we'd go to somewhere else today, maybe hit the third location. I don't know. We went to a uh, we went to a convent up on the hill. It was pretty beautiful, but I wasn't getting very much of a signal up there. But uh, we're going to do more on these cemeteries, Drew, celebrity cemetery tours, grave tours. People like this sort of stuff. And we're here with true uh, respect for all these folks. Don't think that we're you know, uh, running around like Logan Paul, because we're not, we're, we're paying our respects to our favorite celebrities out here. So I know it's not for everybody, guys. I know some people think it's strange that I go into uh, cemeteries and report on celebrities and stuff. But, and I believe that there's some kind of word for it. Like there's a, there's a word, scientific word for people that ha like to hang out in, in, uh, in cemeteries. Hey, thanks for that. Smash the like button from Big Big Hernandez out there. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I'll be bringing you more of these in 2018. We have some plans to go to some other cool uh, cemeteries. Probably not today, but we might be able to hit one more something on the way. But um, uh, yeah, hey, thanks, Canada. Shout out from LA, beautiful Los Angeles, California. And uh, Marilyn Monroe was eulogized in the service over there in that building right there, and nothing's changed. And uh, basically, her casket was walked up by Joe DiMaggio right up this little road right here. It's a very historical location, 1962, guys. A lot of stuff has hardly ever changed. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Oh, there's a guy we know. He showed up. How did this guy show up? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's go over here. But, uh, yeah, we'll sign off now. Save a little bit of my data for the next place that we're going to go to today. I don't know where, but we'll see. I think I had a, have an idea. So stay tuned for another live stream in a little while. I'm uh, my computer and my phones and all my stuff are being uh, clogged up with data. With I'm sorry, uh, with too, with not enough memory. So the best way to put out a video without memory is these live streams because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to edit or anything like that. So hey, thanks Stephanie Williams. 
Judy the Savage from Canada and Judy, yep, that was Judy twice. Cotton Candy and Swamp Picker might be out there and Tina the Fam, I don't know. They're always in the in the room, so thanks very much. If you watch this later, let me know. Hey, Drew, I missed it, but keep on trucking. Yeah. So how cold is it up in Canada right now? And what part of Canada are you in? I've been to uh, Vancouver a lot, and also I spent a lot of time in Toronto, Canada. But uh, pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off for now. Stay tuned for a little while. We're going to come back on and from another location. It's going to be cool, so don't miss it. Tell your friends about California Picking. Keep on picking, guys. All right. Hit like and subscribe too. Smash that like button, guys. All right. Hey, James. Good to good to have you in the room too, buddy. All right. Hope you're well. Give me a call soon. Cheers.